So let's start at the beginning. By now, most of you all, as a matter of fact, all of you, not most of you, have either experienced or have had some opinion on the experience of what happened to you yesterday with your mobile devices and a few other devices when you received what appeared to be an alert on your phone from the president. So let's start with what we know and then I'm going to break down exactly what actually did happen and why you all can stop uh, guessing uh, like those in the night without a flashlight talking about how did you get my number and all of those crazy things. I'm going to introduce you to what we call the IPARS system, the architecture behind it, the laws behind it, and what it really means. And you can stop speculating, or um, as I say, anticipating that sooner or later the government will start invading your privacy in ways you can't imagine, because I am here to tell you that's already happened. So I'm going to take some time with this video. It's not, it's not going to be an easy pass through. So if you're not in the in the, in the position where you want to learn some things, you can go ahead and click on to something at a lower vibration that's not going to educate you on what you have been made a part of and how they're slowly closing the net around us all in so many ways. So let's start at the beginning. For those of you all who don't know, a nationwide wireless emergency test was sent out Wednesday afternoon uh, as the Federal Emergency Management Agency, better known as FEMA, conducted its first presidential alert. Roughly 225 million electronic devices across the U.S. sounded off at 2.18 Eastern Standard Time for a presidential alert that read, this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. No action is needed. And while users can choose not to participate in messages of missing children and natural disasters, they are required to receive presidential alerts, which are sent out at the direction of the White House and activated by FEMA. Rules outlined in the 2006 law, like I said, I'm going to come back to that. This law was passed in 2006. This is interesting. Uh, it states that the White House can issue a presidential alert only if the public were in peril or during national emergency. But I really think that people need to understand why this all came about. And remember, we can take some things and we can corrupt them. But you have to understand that this started with good intentions. While you may not have heard about it before, uh, this alert system has been a long time in coming. The mandatory system and tests originate from the Warning Alert and Response Network Act. That's the law. Signed into law by President George W. Bush in 2006 which mandated the establishment of a national wireless alerting system. Now, the impetus came from the failures to alert citizens during Hurricane Katrina. This all came out of Katrina, folks. The National Weather Service issued a warning that said, pets, persons, and livestock exposed to the winds will face certain death before Katrina made landfall. The messaging was dire and it was clear. The National Weather Service lacked the ability to get this message to people's phones, landline, or mobile, as the federal government had no such centralized phone alert system at this time, and the city of New Orleans didn't have a wireless alerting system either. So after passage of this 2006 law, local governments, states, the U.S. military, and private companies were able to use the new mass notification system to send messages via text, email, or voice, usually voice, but those wireless alert systems lack the engineering to alert large numbers of people simultaneously, and the cellular infrastructure was not built at the time to handle the type of volume for sending thousands of messages through the wire. Networks would crash. With these legacy alerting systems, nothing was integrated, interoperable, or interconnected before. They are now. Each country and state and federal agency was purchasing alerting systems in silos. And they didn't always work with others. Even though the 2006 law had required a national wireless reporting system, not systems. So, President Barack Obama, yes, signed the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System Modernization Act of 2015, which requires these separate alerting systems to work together. 
hence the name in a, as a cloud architect and as an IT specialist of over 20 years, a vast insight into what types of infrastructure systems and some of the relations between those independencies that have to be established to pull off what these folks pulled off yesterday. I will say this to you. In order to do what they did at the same time, simultaneously across multiple systems, had nothing to do with them knowing your phone number. They've already known that. It was the fact that they've now integrated themselves with all of our providers of those services, internet, phone, radio, and television. That's where it begins to get a little scary. Now, let's be clear. This 2015 law that Barack Obama signed into law covers three kinds of notifications. Amber alerts for notifications of missing children, alerts of hazardous weather or other emergencies and presidential alerts. You do not subscribe to these messages as they are pushed to your phone. You can opt out of all notifications except for an alert issued by the president. I'm going to stop here for a second because there was a time when you couldn't opt out of the Amber alerts. Then all of a sudden they had an upgrade to the software and now you can. So now you're telling me that I can opt out of not wanting to hear about missing kids. I can opt out of, of, of a tornado in the next county, but I cannot opt out of the government wanting to talk to me. In other words, I do not have a way to shut off the government being able to talk to, track, or look at my phone. There are eight AT&T data facilities in the U.S., and they're regarded as high-value sites to the NSA for giving the agency direct backbone access to raw data that passes through, including emails, web browsing, social media, and any other form of unencrypted online activity. The NSA uses the web of eight AT&T hubs for a surveillance operation codenamed Fear. You all see where I'm going with this. What I need you to understand is that the iPaws system, which is a national system for alerting, uses several networks. You see all of these? These are separate networks. Now they all talk through, the, through FEMA, through the government. The emergency alerting system, the wireless emergency alerts, the, the NOAA for weather, the internet services, your state local uh, system, and any future technologies will be involved in this architecture. Uh, if you remember, there was an accusation not too long ago that the United States government had installed software not only in phones, but in wireless TVs and a few other devices uh, that gave them the ability to look at you whenever they wanted to, even when the device appeared to be off. With all of this stuff going on, do you not see what happened to you yesterday? That you were all tested. It was a test of the dragnet. Because the dragonfly system that they were utilizing or that they were developing in China with, with Google overlooks one very important fact that the government has always wanted. And that's the ability to have a kill switch. The ability to shut off all mobile phone service and internet service in a targeted region. So let's just say if we all decide to stand up and fight for our rights in a certain city. They can black that city out. No information comes in or goes out. And then you can go in and deal with the people. This is deep police state stuff I'm talking about. And if you don't think there was anything odd about the fact that the U.S. government has the ability now to control all forms of communication without your knowledge. They've been working on this for about five years now. They tested that piece yesterday. You see, before you can become Big Brother, you gotta get some pieces in place. You all like to hear about um, conspiracy theorists and things of that nature, what I'm not. Uh, but what I am is someone who understands what happened yesterday. And I also understand the ramifications that even though there was some some staunch pushback about violations of privacy and folks not having the ability to opt out, and blah, 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 blah. Those things were not supposed to come into fruition. It looks like they totally ignored that and they went ahead and built that stuff anyway. And now they're testing it. So just remember the smartphone that you're holding. The question is, who is it making smart and who's getting treated, get being treated like a dumb idiot? The interesting thing about this entire episode was that they managed to do this across all platforms and everyone, no matter where they were, even in places where you knew that you never got a signal, you got that alert, which leads me to believe that it's functioning on its own transmitting backbone. Mm -hmm.